Hello friends, so let's understand what is echelon form and how to find out the rank of a matrix in the echelon form. So guys, to understand the echelon form, I've taken two examples. So both matrices over here are the matrices of order 4. So if a matrix is in echelon form how to identify it so if the first r rows are non zeros and remaining rows are zeros then such matrix is in echelon form or it is also called as canonical form so guys here you can see that in this first matrix all rows are non zero so what is non zero row so any row of a matrix which has one at least one non-zero element is called as non-zero row of a matrix so here in all rows you will find one non-zero element so therefore this matrix has four non-zero rows now if you see here the row number four has all zeros it means it's a zero row and other three rows are non-zero rows so in echelon form First are rows of matrix are non-zero and remaining rows are zeros. So in this matrix, first three rows are non-zero and the last row is a zero row. And in the first matrix, all four rows are non-zero rows. So we have seen the first point. Now, if you want to check the rank, then here in point number four, the formula is rank of a matrix is number of non-zero rows in the given matrix so since in this first matrix the number of non-zero rows are four therefore the rank is four and in the second matrix the number of non-zero rows are three therefore the rank is three now next so first point we covered now let's see the second point so in echelon form if you observe the matrix then first non-zero element in every non-zero row appears to the right of the first non-zero element of the preceding row let's understand this so let's say here we have row number one and the first non-zero element of this row is two now in the second row the first non-zero element is one in the third row first non-zero element is three and the fourth row first non-zero element is five so as per the point number two the first non-zero element in every non-zero row. So these are the first elements 2, 1, 3 and 5. So these elements appear to the right of the first non-zero element of any preceding row. So you can see that in second row, the first non-zero element which is 1 is right of the first non-zero element of row number 1. Similarly, in the third row we have 3 which is on the right of this one and this 5 is on the right of this 3 so this is the very important condition similarly you will find in this matrix the first non-zero element is 4 next one is 2 which is to the right of this 4 next one is 3 in the next row which is to the right of this 2 so guys this is the mandatory condition next also the number of zeros before the first non-zero element so here first non-zero element is 1 so number of zeros here it is 1 0 here there are 2 zeros and here there are 3 zeros so the third point is the number of zeros before the first non-zero element of any row is less than the number of such zeros in the next row so you can observe that so here we have 1 0 here we have 2 zeros here we have 3 0 so this condition is getting satisfied so guys this is what is the form of a clone or we can also call it as canonical form now the note is the final matrix corresponding to a clone form so these two are here one and two are the final matrices so the final matrix corresponding to a clone form of a given matrix may not be equal so it means let's say we have one matrix a and we are reducing it to echelon form so 
let's assume that there are two or three students in a class and all of them are applying some row transformation to convert that matrix into echelon form so it may possible that all three students will get a different final answer so this matrix can be different in all cases because the row operations which will be used by each student will be different so the final matrix may not be unique however the echelon form is unique so it means the pattern of zeros and non zeros is always unique so guys i hope you understood how do we convert the given matrix to the echelon form and how the echelon form looks like so whenever a question is given to find the rank of a matrix by converting that matrix to the echelon form we are going to convert that matrix in such forms so i hope you understood the concept and you like the concept how i explained you so just keep this concept in mind because that will be useful to us while solving the numericals based on echelon form so guys i'm taking your leave thank you very much for watching this video